Hey guys, it's Kate, and I hope you'll join me today for a watercolor landscape sunrise painting. I am doing something slightly different than my normal video, so I hope that you will grab your supplies, your watercolors, whatever paper you have on hand, and join me to do this uh, painting. So I am working with my Mozart Coma Raby palette today, and I'm also grabbing some paper that I don't usually work with. So I have used it in a recent video, but I picked up some Artist Loft watercolor paper at Michael's on sale, and it's a pretty reasonably priced paper. So I normally work with um, B watercolor paper, which is cotton, and I have some other cotton varieties of watercolor paper. This one's wood pulp, and I actually um, first started with Canson watercolor paper, which is also wood pulp, and it's what I got started on. So it's kind of interesting to try this paper out, and it's pretty fun, and I want to kind of embrace its own qualities for this painting. So I found a uh, reference photo on Udsplash, and if you're interested in following along with me and doing this painting, I'm going to link to the photo in the description below, so check that out. But I thought it would be pretty fun to do a painting like this today, just as a little bit of a departure from the normal abstracts I do. And this is still kind of an abstracted landscape, but I, it's obviously something recognizable. At least I hope so once it's finished. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun to do, and even though it's not something that I normally do, I did really enjoy it. So if you like seeing these, let me know and I will be happy to create more. But I chose to work some with this paper because a lot of people use wood pulp paper and it has a different feel and a little bit of a different quality um, for sure. But I think, you know, Something I always like to say is, really, it's it's based on what your expectations are. We all have our own personal preferences, um, cer certain ways we like to paint or do things, and for some things, certain types of paper might be better than others, depending on what you're going for. So I tend to get a lot of extra texture and... You know, you have like those cauliflower blooms and stuff when you have a little bit of a water issue, but sometimes that's kind of a neat effect. And so I was really excited to play with this paper in this painting, and I really liked how it turned out. And another challenging thing for a lot of people, I think, is to paint light, especially if you're working in watercolor, and it's challenging to me. It's not like there's a white paint that's going to cover over something you already painted. So it's sort of, I guess, counterintuitive if you're used to working with things like maybe oils or acrylics when it doesn't really matter if you put on your highlights last when watercolor is exactly the opposite, unless you want to finish off with some white gouache, which is more opaque. So I really wanted to practice something uh, with light, and I thought that a sunrise would be kind of the perfect thing. And I love landscapes, and I love plant or painting trees and foliage, and well, if you've been on my channel for long, you know leaves are one of my favorite things. <laughs> Basic, complicated, bushes, trees, whatever. So um, I love all things leaves, and so I was only too happy to paint this little landscape scene with the nice big tree in it. Now in the sky that I'm working on right now, I am kind of embracing a little bit of that texture on the paper because it, it kind of gives you that cloudy look, like there's stuff in the sky, and I really liked that. I'm kind of sweeping my brush across spreading a little bit of that blue across the oranges and the yellows and just giving it that little bit of extra texture. And since I have my sunrise kind of in the bottom right, my darker sky and my shadowy areas are going to be kind of on the left like you can see in the picture. 
And it's going to be the same thing with the tree once we get to that step. But when I first started this painting, I went immediately for the light spot first. So you'll remember I put basically a big block of yellow, even under where the grass is and everything. And it just kind of gives it that nice base of brightness that will still shine through, even with other layers on top, like the greens of the grass and stuff like that. I'm kind of working and adding in more contrast here and more green in the grass and just kind of working slowly as things start to dry. And I also let it dry between a couple of the layers also. I don't want it to get too muddy, but I do want to introduce some texture with my brush and kind of go over some of the same areas again. And I like putting that contrast line of the horizon there because it really makes that brightness of the sunrise pop even more and stand out. And I was really happy with how that turned out with just really showing the light in the painting. Now my style of painting isn't really photorealistic, but I do like to do sort of abstracted landscapes and things like that. Recently I had my video with the uh, Marie's watercolor and funny enough, after I did my swatches and everything, I decided to do like a little flower pot and a little flower garden against a brick wall instead of what I normally do, which is kind of abstract. but. They were just so much fun to do, and I just happened to kind of gravitate toward that when I did my palette swatching. So this is sort of a revisit, but also on different paper that I think a lot of people use because it's so easy to get. It's what most people have immediate access to, and it's pretty inexpensive compared to other papers. And while there is a difference in papers, you can certainly paint on a lot of different surfaces. And as long as you know what to expect, you can make it work. So I'm going in and starting with my tree, which I think outside of the sunrise itself is my favorite part. <laughs> I love putting in all the leaves with my brush and just kind of letting it sort of dance on the page, I guess, a little bit. And for me, I really like putting in a lot of color variation in the leaves. And so I go in with my first green blend and kind of block in the shape and scatter some random marks around, but keeping the general shape of the tree um, fair, fairly close to the picture and just putting in some marks and when they all kind of come together it's that leafy tree and it just sort of appears it's kind of neat how that happens but when i put in the first layer of green and i have my basic shape then i can kind of go in with some of those other green color variations and also add in some shadows and some more golden color like you see shining through from the sunrise And I think in terms of painting, that's really what kind of makes it. You have just these different tones and colors and hues and saturation, and 
it just all blends together so nicely. Um, I like using this paper, actually. I was pleasantly surprised. I think I might <laughs> like it better than Canson. Canson, I always felt like I couldn't quite work, get it to work the way I wanted, but I think I have a little bit better luck with this paper as far as wood pulp papers go. So if you haven't tried Artist Loft, you, you might want to. I don't know if it'll work for you and your style of painting, but... It's worth a try if you're looking for a low-cost alternative to another more expensive paper. So I'm going in with some darker Payne's Gray over to the left. I'm definitely kind of keeping a little bit, a little bit darker, cooler on the left side of the tree, just like in the sky. And then... I'll still have some shadow areas toward the right, but as you can see me going through, my brush strokes get a lot fewer with the darker color, and I kind of load it in more on the left where I want my shadows. And then I want to go in with some of that gold. And I've got some green in there that's still mixed in, and that's fine with me. I just want to introduce that yellow that will almost kind of be like sun shining through the tree. And it adds that warmth to it. So I'm going to put that over to the right and bring it into the left a little bit, but like with the dark Payne's Gray mixture, not as much toward the left. Just a little hint. And then once that dries, I'm going to go back in and add some more color toward the bottom. I want to get some more shadows into that grass and also darken up some other areas of the painting. And I kind of like that texture with multiple layers. <laughs> And I'm just kind of sweeping my brush down. I'm trying to take away some of those hard edges. And in some ways, I think I definitely overworked the paint a little bit, but I actually liked all the texture, so I was fine with that. I liked the sort of textured look, and it just added some interest there for me. So stylistically, I'm fine with that. And I kind of like that sort of pattern on the paper, too. You can see the texture come through, especially in the grassy area that uh, where the color kind of sinks into the, the dips in the paper. And I thought that added a little something nice, too. definitely a good day for an experiment and I really do hope you're joining along with me on this I had so much fun making it and even if you don't use this photo reference and you choose a different one it's it's really fun to play around and just see how your colors blend together and just create something
So I'm trying to get my last bit of shadows in there. And I'm also going into the deep black now with my liner brush. And now I get to put in my tree branches, which really just kind of finishes everything off. So I did a little test stroke over on my paper towel to make sure that it would be nice and opaque. I wanted it to be nice and dark. And so I'm just going easy, starting with the narrowest side of the branches and then letting it kind of thicken up as I get closer to where they meet. And because I kind of went a little bit on my own style with the leaf pattern, I'm not following along too closely with the picture as far as where the branches go. I'm just kind of putting them where they feel right, but I am following the general shape of the large branch that's in the photo. It's kind of funny because as I was painting this and I'm putting in these different colors and the lights and the greens and the leaves and it was the branches that finally pulled it all together and just completed the look. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I remember watching this um, other video a long time ago and it was somebody painting I think a, a rose and they're kind of blocking in colors and starting off with darks and gradually getting lighter and at first it's just sort of blobs and then they put in the white highlight on some of the petals and it's just oh my gosh all of a sudden there was a rose in front of your face and I kind of felt like that with this tree and the branches just kind of put the tree in front of my face and finished it off. And I was just so happy with the way this turned out, especially using a paper that I'm not really familiar with and don't use. So I'm just adding black in a couple other areas of those really deep shadows. One is that tree line on the horizon and then a little bit in that path. And it kind of worked out nice because then you have that very dark rich color in more than one area of the painting so it looks a little bit more balanced. But all in all, I am pretty happy with this paper. <laughs> it's an affordable way to have fun with paints. I decided to go back in with just a little bit extra yellow straight out of the pan and just add a little bit more of that golden color in the tree. I'm just being careful to avoid the branches so that they don't bleed together. I don't want the black to go anywhere else but on the branches. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit more Payne's Gray over to the left for the shadowy parts. And I think mine is drying time. This whole painting didn't really take all that long. I have the footage sped up a little bit, but not too much. And 
I was able to complete several layers, so it was a really fun project, not hard. I think if you're a beginner, this would be a great starting point and just um, just dive in and do it. And just play with your color, see how it blends on your paper and just work on your colors and shadows and highlights. And it doesn't have to be exact. It can be whatever your style is. And so I finished it up and I am officially taking off the tape. And here is your close up. So again, if you're interested in doing this, um, click the link below to get the photo reference. And I hope you enjoy this project. And thank you again for watching today. And until next time, keep creating.